I ride people on the streets, so this is where we're staying. I quite like it actually, that spa was really useful yesterday. We went there and uh, thankfully the lady in there spoke English. So surprise surprise I have learned I have learned a little bit of the language actually. Uh, so everywhere that I go, if you've not watched this channel before, one thing you will know is that I do try to learn some of the language of the places that I go to because to be honest I think it's uh, polite to do so and I think the English we have a reputation for not really bothering to learn languages and I want to try and help get rid of that perception so uh, I've been learning a little bit this way I've been learning a little bit my wife is the guide today so uh, here we go out on the street this is what it's looking like pretty cool so far so so far I've learned really just a couple of basic phrases uh, so for instance good morning is minimenges uh, good afternoon is mierdita good evening is miemrama thank you is faramindaritz or faramindaritz i come not quite sure how to pronounce that one um goodbye is milkafshim um delicious is eshishne one is nio two is do <laughs> yes is Po, no is yo, so or yo, so yeah, very very different language to what I've learned before. Look at this, this is a bit of a right. So far, so good. Look at that, uh, that big painting up there. Look, the bookcase, I like that. And of course, you've got big sprawling modern buildings, but you've also got tradition and history. So I'm hoping to, that we can see a slice of hope today. And it's very much a modern country that is still developing in certain places but is very much a modern place in quite a few of the areas as well so much like Podgorica it's going to be quite a uh, quite an interesting city to visit because you're going to have these sprawling buildings like this modern buildings like this and then you may have some more rundown buildings and some very historical buildings as well. So let's go and have a closer look. So as you can see, it's a very, very busy capital city, which uh, compared to Podgorica is completely different. So Podgorica was very, very quiet, very few people. Uh, whereas this is a bit more busier, a bit more lively and a bit more bustling, which, uh, is a has a unique energy to it as i say when we were coming through yesterday on the taxi we noticed that there was so much going on so many people you know so many different types of people as well you had young old you had so many different people but what i really do love about this country so far is the artwork that adorns all of the buildings so for instance you've got this building over here and then you've got that historical looking building there which is very beautiful You've got this rather impressive mural here and of course that really cool bookcase built building that i mentioned earlier and a massive developing building just up there i mean i didn't know what to expect but what a lively bustling city and uh just over there i don't know if you can make it out i'll try and flip the camera it'll be quite difficult to see but just over there you can make out a sign that says born free or a big building with purple on it and uh, yeah, that is uh, where we're staying. But what a city so far. How modern is this? Very beautiful. So we're heading now to what is known as Scandberg Square. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. And uh, this is one of the most popular areas in the uh, in the city actually because of its pure build uh, well pure beauty and history though it must be said it's a shame to see that such beauty and history is being mired by a lot of uh, a lot of rubbish and uh, people not taking care of the city which is a shame because uh, you've got buildings such as this which are absolutely beautiful and this square here well really speaks for itself it's uh, Let's say it's a marvel it's beautiful and uh 
<clears throat> I think it's important to remember that this country is uh, still on the rise. But uh, nonetheless, they are clearly investing greatly in the city in order to uh, bring in more tourists, which is strange actually, because I haven't seen many tourists yet. So uh, we're kind of one of the very few, which is uh, quite nice. Wow. So as you can see, I've got the camera again. So morning peeps. Um, so we're at this square and I've got to say, it's, it's incredible absolutely incredible as you can see there's that building behind us which is brilliant and then to, in front of me you'll see a mosque look at that how cute how cool is that doesn't that look bloody brilliant yeah this has completely blown me away um oh we've got a ferris wheel let me um turn it around so you can see look at that And then to the left of it, I don't know if you can see, let me zoom in a bit. Look at that, cool statue. And you can see, in black again. But hey, that's just how I roll. Oh, look at this, um, I don't know if Bob's already shown you, but I'll show you anyway. Let me zoom in. How cool. Is that, is that, look at that, that is awesome. So we push on further and uh, as you can see, it is one of the more livelier capital cities really actually. Um, I've been to a couple in my time and this is one of the, uh, the more, the more bustling ones actually. Um, quite hectic actually, I wasn't expecting it. I thought it'd be quite a, uh, quite a, a quiet atmosphere, yeah, but, uh, no, it's very energetic, very lively. Uh, and I quite like that actually about this place. And uh, there's certainly some contrasts in the buildings. You've got a lot of modernism and then you've got a lot of traditionalism as well. And there's also a lot of Ottoman inspired design as well. So very, very interesting. So some more useful phrases, if you want to learn a little bit of Albanian is, uh, especially if you're a tourist, look flash ship. So that means I do not speak Albanian. You can also say mefal nuk flashib, which means sorry, I don't speak Albanian, or I'm sorry. But actually thinking about it, it'd be better to say mefalni, because that's a bit more, in, a bit more formal. Mefal is a bit more formal. So mefalni would be a bit more polite. So mefalni nuk flashib, that means I'm sorry, I don't speak Albanian. And then you can follow it with aflizni, Englished. Do you speak English? <clears throat> so again, I uh, I think it's important to learn a couple of phrases and already it's been quite useful because a lot of people here don't actually speak English, which uh, is completely fine. You can't go around the world expecting everyone to speak English for you. And that's why it's very important to learn a few phrases, a few survival phrases, I guess some people call it, but I don't think of them as survival phrases. I think of them more as, uh, as common courtesy, being respectful to the people and showing an appreciation for their culture by trying to learn some of their language and trying to communicate with them in their language. And the smiles that you get and the appreciation you get always makes it worthwhile. If you watch our videos, you'll see that at some point in the videos, I will try and speak the language or I'll try and demonstrate how to speak the language. And it's not the easiest language to learn, admittedly, but it's well worth doing. So Albania is a very, very diverse country when it comes to its population, in terms of its buildings, in terms of its cuisine, its history, its language, everything. And the reason for that is, is because of how much change it has been through over the years. So for instance, when it was founded, it was ruled by the Illyrians, which uh, not many people have heard of, I guess. It's uh, an ancient uh, civilization. So rather old. And of course it was also ruled by the Ottomans. Italy invaded. And then it was also occupied by Nazi Germany and eventually gained independence and unity within the country. And as you can see, it really does have an influence on the architecture 
and the design of the buildings. You've got modernism, you've got old styles, you've got Ottoman buildings. There is a little bit of everything. This place essentially breathes history at every turn and it's very rare that you can go into a city and everywhere you look you're seeing beautiful plazas and then buildings which are, you know, standing the test of time themselves but clearly a part of older history. Very few places we experience this and one thing I've also noticed is that tourism is here not as uh, low as it is in Podgorica. There is tourism here, but it's still relatively untapped. And I believe that this, you know, tourism only really began here recently, which is fascinating to me. Uh, a country with such contrasts, history and character, only being visited by tourists recently. And of course, there is also the old communist vibe as well. And a country that has been ruled and conquered and managed by so many different people is going to have the most unique of characters. Here we see an example of a traditional back alley scene in Tirana and uh, again we like to go off the beaten trail and try and explore all of the city that we visit and uh, I've just found a Batman cat. How cool is that? Hello kitty. Hello friend. Aren't you lovely? Hello buddy. Aww. We'll call him Batman cat. <laughs> he had the, uh, the Batman face. But you can also see markets and buildings of all types here. And again, I know I keep saying it, but it really is a country of such character and diversity. And I've never been to a capital city with so much diversity in its buildings and its people and its food and its language in my life. And for me, this is a, it's been somewhat of a complete surprise. I missed the bit when we first arrived, things did seem a little bit chaotic, given the roads and the part that we arrived in where the bus station is, the infrastructure seemed to be lacking somewhat. It was seen to be crumbling and things like that. And of course, that's going to happen wherever you go. Even where I live, we have the exact same thing. We have some very beautiful areas and then we have areas which are decaying and crumbling. And that's probably a, uh, a common thing in most places. So never let that be a way for you to judge a country. Give it its full potential. Give it a chance. And when you do, you might be surprised. Already in this video, we've seen sprawling buildings. We've seen ancient Ottoman designs. We've seen back alleys, wineries, plenty of shops, charity shops as well, which is pretty cool. We like a good charity shop where we're from in the UK. And so far, everyone's been very friendly, accommodating, and mafalni, getting in people's way. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's uh, generally very nice. Uh, so we're going to have to go and print a ticket for our bus when we go back to Podgorica. So we're going to go and do that now. So let's get it done and then we'll go and explore some more. All right, so we just got our boarding pass printed to get home. And uh, the bloke who ran that shop or the guy that ran that shop is absolutely incredible. What a lovely guy. All right, so got our ticket printed out successfully. And uh, what a guy, absolute legend. So this is the shop, if you're wondering. I don't know if you can see that very well. Express Print and Communication, just there. So it is on um, Ruga Islam Allah. So Ruga is street, so Islam Allah street. Just there, I don't know if you can make that out. But this is the name of the place. Express Print Communication. Crazy enough, what a lovely bloke. He didn't charge us. He said, oh no, no charge. You don't have to pay any money. And uh, we successfully printed out our boarding passes to get us on the bus back to Podgorica, which we was a bit worried about because we didn't know if we'd be able to do that. And uh, essentially get stranded. I can think of worse places to be stranded though. Look at this. So 
you'll have to excuse me because I'm currently tethered to Tammy but I tell you what everyone's been so friendly I'm a bit gutted we missed it really as we turned off the camera this because uh, I was filming a segment this guy in his car was like oh you're from London and uh, I'm not from London I'm from Peterborough but not many people know where Peterborough is and it's close well it's 80 miles away close enough and it's one of the few places that people across the world know so I just tend to tell people I'm from London and to be honest I spend so much time there I might as well be from there <laughs> at some point I was there every single week <laughs> um, so if you ever hear me say I'm from London I'm actually from Peterborough um, but to be honest we don't have the best of reputations almost got run over there uh, we've got the we haven't got the best of reputations so it's probably better to tell people i'm from london but you're all right yeah i've just got stuck with the palm tree oh <laughs> there's batman cat again hello friend oh, hello friend thank you batman cat there making an appearance again in the video and uh so we've actually been recommended a restaurant by uh by the guy that did the printing services so we wanted to try a traditional dish. I cannot pronounce it, I'm not gonna to try to, so I'll just put it below. We wanted to try that dish, and we said, where can we try this dish? Now, I think it's always best to ask the locals mm. where to try the food from. I don't know about you, Tam, but- Absolutely. Every time we've done that, best. <laughs> we've got the best uh, recommendations, they know best. I think it's best to ask someone who's impartial, because sometimes you can ask, if somebody tells you to go somewhere specifically, that could be because they're trying to lead you into a tourist trap. So you get it in a lot of countries where someone will be like, come, come to our restaurant, come to this restaurant. But if you just have someone walking about on the streets, I mean, you know, obviously don't flag someone down if they don't want to, but if you ask someone kindly enough, they might point out some recommendations. Um, but we need to go in this direction. Strangely enough to the old bazaar, I didn't know there was a bazaar here. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing that and uh, going to explore a little bit of Albanian food in the process. So there we go. First day in Tirana, Albania, and it has been amazing so far. Everyone's been really friendly, really helpful. And actually, the further we go into the center, the easier it is to communicate with people because the language is, well, the English language is spoken a lot more commonly. Where we're staying, it's not as common, but as you know, we tend to get off the beaten trail and stay away from the tourist sections. But it's been fantastic. I would highly recommend coming to visit if you get the chance. And if you want to go to a country with something a little bit different, definitely give Albania a go. Thank you so much for watching, people. We hope you have a great day. Any last words, Sam? No, I like it. Last words, that sounds a bit ominous, doesn't it? <laughs> Any words from you, Sam? All good. A lady, a few words, but yeah, really good so far, people. Come and give it a go.